Oh, hi. I will confess right off the bat, first thing, um, that these birds are fake. <laughs> I mean, they're not fake. They're, they're still actual birds, but I am lying. My window is closed, so it's clearly not from this reality. <laughs> As I'm watching these with you, it makes me feel so um, weird. I know weird is not a feeling, but... <laughs> I can see myself rushing things and it makes me so uneasy because that's not how I feel currently and I didn't even know how to try to calm down but I can watch myself rushing things and not rushing in a way that I need to get these done for a shop update or I have a deadline somehow it's just sad to see that my standard mindset for crafting and making things was I need to be fast and effective and I cannot waste time and I need to be very like an assembly line very productive and practical in the way I do things which is not how I want to live my life so I'm so glad that I can watch this and pick up on how fast I'm going with my brush strokes and seeing that I'm not doing that anymore and that it's proof enough that we can change if we decide to take small steps into doing things another way. Self-control. Okay, I need to say off the top <laughs> what it is. Because we had a debate about this yesterday, and then we're like, we can't talk about it, because we're the podcast. But okay, self-control is the ability to regulate one's emotions, thoughts, and behavior in the face of temptations and impulses. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Because we were sort of debating. Yeah, what were we debating? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we had some drinks. Um, <laughs> and we made ourselves stop. Hey, we're black out. I'm just kidding. No, we were debating, in my view, I'll say what I thought it was and what I think you were saying, <laughs> and we can then read. As a Man Thinketh, 1902, written by James Allen, narrated by Andrew Farrell. Mind is the master power that molds and makes, and man is mind, and evermore he takes the tool of thought, and shaping what he wills, brings forth a thousand joys, a thousand ills. He thinks in secret, and it comes to pass, environment is but his looking glass. Forward. This little volume, the result of meditation and experience, is not intended as an exhaustive treaty on the much written upon subject of the power of thought. 
It is suggestive rather than explanatory, its object being to stimulate men and women to the discovery and perception of the truth that they themselves are makers of themselves. Thought in the mind hath made us, by what we are, by thought, was wrought and built. If a man's mind hath evil thoughts, pain comes on him as comes the wheel of the ox behind. <laughs> if one endure in purity of thought, joy follows him as his own shadow, sure. Man is a growth by law, and not a creation by artifice. And cause and effect is as absolute and undeviating in the hidden realm of thought as in the world of visible and material things. A noble and godlike character is not a thing of favor or chance, but is the natural result of continued effort and right thinking, the effect of long cherished association with godlike thoughts. An ignoble and bestial character, by the same process, is the result of the continued harboring of groveling thoughts. Man is made or unmade by himself. In the armory of thought, he forges the weapons by which he destroys himself. He also fashions the tools with which he builds for himself heavenly mansions of joy and strength and peace. By the right choice and true application of thought, man ascends to the divine perfection. By the abuse and wrong application of thought, he descends below the level of the beast. Between these two extremes are all the grades of character, and man is their maker and master. what happens in our lives. And all pain has a, a sensory component, what we feel. It also has a cognitive component that I was talking about in the sense of what we think it is and what we think is going to happen to us. But it also has an affective component, meaning the emotions around it. And as we have pain or symptoms, if our emotions are tied up with that, if our emotions kick in, if we get fr afraid, if we get worried, if we feel like it's never going to go away and we're doomed, those emotions make the pain worse. And so our treatment that we're going to do as part of this program is changing our understanding of the symptoms, changing our, our reaction to the symptoms, changing our emotions about the symptoms, and that's part of the way that we change the symptoms themselves. Because these are the cause of the symptoms. They're coming symptoms are coming from, as I said before, our minds.
It's so funny to treat YouTube as a blank canvas and just feel different about it because technically, I don't think my videos are that different. <laughs> it's just a feeling. It's just your reality that's being created by how you perceive things, right? And it was always a blank canvas. Yes, it was. But I'm, I'm wondering like what actually is a blank canvas in your life? Because you're always being um influenced by other things and by other moods that you have and your perceptions of whatever life is right and youtube is no different it's something that you do and something that you consume and produce at the same time so you're always comparing it to something that already exists and it can be quite poisoning so i'm reading this book about perfectionism it's called how to be an imperfectionist i just google like books about perfectionism <laughs> and found like the top three most rated like best rated books um about the subject and anyways um but it's really really nice to see somebody you know when somebody describes something that you feel and think about all the time but when somebody has the exact words that make you be like sorry that make you you go like oh wow i'm really not the only one huh <laughs> It's like I'm a human being after all, like, <laughs> I'm not feeling these things alone, that's super cool. <laughs> and by the way, perfectionism, perfectionism is just an umbrella term for not feeling good enough and not feeling like you're doing enough or making enough or whatever enough. We know logically what perfectionism is and how we cannot be perfectionists because perfection doesn't exist so we logically understand that that is not a thing but we live by doing it anyways <laughs> and i'm not here to uh, to go on a rant about why it happens to us and why like you know i'm not here to say like oh society and the world blah blah <laughs> i don't think i want to do that anymore because i don't know like it doesn't really help as much as we think it does I think I got very upset like doing therapy and going over the same subjects over, like back and forth on the same subjects and realizing that that was not gonna change anything and I don't know to me it was just like it felt very a waste of time in a sense because I kept talking about it but talking about it gives you a feeling that you're doing something about it but you're really not because you're just talking and uh, there is nothing in this world that can substitute or replace acting and I understand that talking can make you feel comfortable to start acting but sometimes we tend to talk too much especially with therapy yeah I understand that it's just one hour in a week but if you're so used to pushing things away and setting things aside to be dealt with later and just talking about it makes you feel like you're doing something about a particular thing that you want to change I, I just felt like it was not it and it was really not because my biggest changes came after I quit <laughs> therapy and started started to notice things by myself and change things by myself and i understand that sometimes a therapist might help you get to that point but i think life is too particular and complex for us to judge things like that i think in many situations you're gonna be able to like gather your thoughts or notice patterns in your life faster than somebody else because you are the one who feels things and for some other people or some situations in life you will need help just because you cannot see things clearly from your own perspective or it, it would take a long time anyways in this particular case i think therapy was triggering me to talk about the things that i was experiencing instead of acting so it ended up being a trigger instead of um, helpful but anyways 
that was not what I wanted to talk about. I think I'm too used to Twitch now that I just start talking about something and go on and on and on. <laughs> this is a YouTube beat. Evna, what are you doing? I have been having a lot of fun with um, like a screen tone brush. These little dots. And I decided to paint this little guy here like with gouache and traditional painting. No, oh, I got this one to show you as well. <laughs> it's like just a little detail with the little dots, but I'm loving it and focus. <laughs> so I got some new, like a little kit of dip pens so I could experiment a little bit more because I had these dip pens from Speedball. They come in a little kit as well with a bunch of nibs but for some reason oops it's not focusing for some reason i don't love them i think they're very stiff but it could be focus <laughs> it could be because i'm using acrylic ink this one is dried out of course but i'm using acrylic ink this one here because I can mix it up and make any color that I want instead of buying just like dip pen inks. This is the one I use for my fountain pen. Um, and this is usually what you should use with dip pens because they're very light and very diluted so um, it wouldn't clog the fountain pens. But with dip pens, since they are a little bit more free because you don't have like a uh, d d what is it called in English? Like a cartridge? No, like a... You could experiment a little bit more with other styles of ink, but then I think it's clogging it a little bit. Well, I can't see it visually because it seems to be doing fine. Like I can still open it normally with the pressure that I, you, that I would usually put. So I don't know if that's what's causing a little problem of stiffness or if it's the nib itself. So I got this little set from the leader and it's lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely. It comes with three nibs. This one is the G pen. And then it comes with uh, a sad G pen and the Maru pen. I don't know what they call pen when it's just nibs. And I'm wanting a little bit too much for my camera to be focused on this focusing on this tiny thing <laughs> but yeah these are the two nibs i love this one it's my favorite it's the maru pen the problem is that it's kind of um too thin so what happens is that it's kind of hard to make like very thin lines and to make it long enough or to draw circles and I'll show it to you here. So this is the Maru pen, the one that I like the most. And circles are right here. It's kind of hard. They kind of skip a little bit. I don't think you can tell in this paper. But <laughs> like also when writing, it's kind of hard to write. Like they, they're very stiff. And you feel like you're going to break it. Not stiff. They're not stiff. But you feel like you're going to break the tip. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try painting this guy here. I already painted the gouache part. I don't think I filmed it. <laughs> I think I filmed for a little Instagram reel. But yeah, I'm going to outline this one, which is this guy here. <laughs> and I'm going to use the new pens today to see how I like it. Yay, let's do this. But yeah, just to close my thoughts from before I interrupted you to show pen nibs, which I love, by the way. I'm not complaining. Keep interrupting myself, me. Uh, anyway, just to finish on the perfectionism topic, I've been paying attention to lots of things that I do thinking constantly that it's not good enough and it's not as good as I would like to or what I imagined it to be and honestly I would 
I would want to say that it takes time and it, it I don't know that it's difficult but to be very very honest I find it so liberating and so freeing that I just feel good like <laughs> It's like I don't really notice that it's gonna take some time. If I can change my thought at one point, I'm already happy because I'm not dwelling in a negative way of thinking and I'm not like poisoning myself with that thinking for too long. If I cut that thought right there, I'm happy enough that I, I am no longer engaging with that and I already it's like I'm already reaping the benefits of, of changing my mind. Which is honestly amazing. And I thought I could give you some examples because there are so many. And I, I think I'm best explaining them in text. That's why I'm doing it on my newsletter on Patreon. <laughs> so funny that I'm mentioning it like, oh yeah, by the way, if you want to know more, click here to subscribe. No, that's not it. And it's just, <laughs> I would love to know about people talking about these things because I would love to get more of that, like insights and how... I can extinguish perfectionism. Anyways, but just simple examples that I can tell you. Reading books. For some reason, we hear all the time that we should read more and that we should finish one, two, three, four, whatever, how many books. And we're always like, I have to read more. I have to finish my book, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, aren't I enjoying this book? Like, why do I need to read 10 pages a day or 20 or 30 or whatever? Isn't the purpose of a book to bring you new perspectives and to feel them? It's not gathering information that you're never gonna use, it's to actually change your life. And changing your life doesn't have to be anything big or crazy. It just has to be, oh, I read something? Let me try to find where this applies in my life right now. Let me try to find where I'm being a perfectionist when I'm reading about perfectionism. <laughs> and actually do something different like what am i gonna do if i read 40 chapters of something i'm, I'm not gonna f be 40 times faster in finding things in my life because it only i can only find those things if i stop stop reading actually <laughs> and actively try to find them or paying attention to life and things and why do we think more, reading more, gathering more information is going to make us happier? What does it mean? Is it better to read like five books about compassion and empathy? Or to really listen to somebody when they need? Or to pick up on a friend needing help without them asking you and offering support in some way that you know that they're going to love? Isn't that what life is about? I'll slowly try to tell you and show you what I've been doing differently and how I'm changing perfectionism in my life and I hope you can take something from it. I hope you can start noticing some patterns in your life as well. And yeah, let's see what the new videos come with. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.